of Player Mini enables easy incorporation of sound playback into DIY projects. I have an upcoming video showing how I use this module, together with a microwave movement sensor, to make a barking dog alarm, so please subscribe and click the bell to be notified. This video shows the basics of using the DF Player Mini module, but first, the obligatory self-promotion. The DF Player Mini is a MP3 module that integrates an MP3 decoder chip with a micro SD card driver, a built-in 3 watt amplifier, onboard voltage regulator and serial comms port so that control can be performed from an interface microcontroller or you can just use the AD key control mode and some push buttons. Overall a nice economically priced module, as can be seen here, that enables easy incorporation of sound playback into DIY projects with an example of this being the interfacing of a DF player mini together with a movement sensor to make a barking dog alarm, which I will detail in an upcoming video. The DF player mini can be used in various configurations, either standalone or interface to a microcontroller, with the simplest being just a suitable power supply, a 4 or 8 ohm speaker and a couple of push buttons as shown in this breadboard circuit. The allowable voltage supply to the module is between 3.3 and 5 volts, which I'm doing here just with my benchtop supply. As per the data sheet, pin 1, which is to the top and right of the module as shown, is voltage in, with pin 10 being ground. Two push buttons, which connect straight to ground, are used for volume control and selecting between sound tracks on the SD card. The module has a built-in 3 watt amplifier that is suitable for both 4 ohm and 8 ohm speakers. I used a salvage speaker from an old TV set, for which I made a 3D printed enclosure, but of course this is optional. The speaker simply connects to pin 6 and pin 8. And finally, you need a micro SD card onto which the soundtracks have been recorded. The soundtracks have to be named according to a set format, but I'll speak more about this later. So with the circuit assembled and ready to go, you power on, but nothing appears to happen. The red LED is just my addition to let me know that the power is actually present. The trick is, not only that the default power on state is that nothing plays, which is fine and makes sense, but not even the onboard LED is energised. Only when you press one of the buttons does the module start playing the first sound file on the SD card and the blue LED turns on. When the sound file is finished, the blue LED turns off. This default behaviour seems good in order to minimise power usage. After this, pressing and holding the button attached to pin 9, the left hand button in this case, will decrease the volume, whereas pressing and holding the button attached to pin 11 will increase the volume. Press and release of the right hand button selects the next track on the SD card, whereas a short press on the left hand button selects the previous track. While this basic circuit probably unlikely to be implemented as is, other than on a breadboard, it is useful for checking that a module is actually working. The data sheet shows another schematic, which more fully tests the basic functionality of the module, and for example would enable you to roll your own standalone MP3 player only requiring a few resistors. While unlikely you'd want to do this, I've assembled the circuit for demonstration purposes and completeness. The AD key pins, pins 12 and 13, enable connecting a resistor ladder and a series of momentary contact push buttons that it provide user input for the various functions such as playing tracks, selecting tracks in various ways and volume control. The datasheet details the necessary resistor values that will enable each of these specific functions. In this breadboard circuit, I've implemented all the functions on pin 80 key 1, which include pause, play, loop all, increase and decrease volume, and the direct selection of tracks 1 through 4. Before showing the circuit working, just a quick overview of how the sound files need to be named on the SD card. The root directory on the SD card contain up to 3000 files, either .mp3 or .wav, they must be literally titled 0001, 0002, up to a maximum of 3000. There can also be a folder named MP3, in which up to 65,536 files can be stored, again titled 0001, 0002, etc. 
Using the AD key method, the module by default accesses tracks from the root directory, but if no files are in the root directory, the AD key method will then use files in the MP3 folder instead. The allowed naming format also allows folders named 01, 02 through to 99, in which up to 255 sound files can be stored, but files in such folders cannot be accessed using the AD key method. With that out of the way, a quick demonstration of the extended circuit using the AD key method. Again when powering on, the default behaviour is that no track plays and the onboard blue LED is not lit. Pressing any button and the module starts playing the first track. As I previously said when discussing the schematic, the function of each button on the breadboard is determined by the associated resistor value, with the function of each button shown as labelled. I connected a couple of digital multimeters to show both input voltage and current used by the MP3 module when operating, which is useful information if planning on using batteries to power the module. At power on, and when not playing a sound file, the quiescent current appears to be approximately 20 milliamp with an applied voltage of approximately 4.5 volts. When a track is played, note that the default power on behavior is for maximum volume, the current usage rises to approximately 120 milliamps. This was with an 8 ohm speaker. The current usage obviously decreases when the volume is decreased and vice versa. Selecting a volume that resulted in approximately 50 milliamp consumption, I then decreased the applied voltage to see when the module would cut out, which was at about 3.7 volts. The next section shows how to interface a microcontroller to enable serial port communication and control of the module, which gives access to additional functionality. Using the MP3 module with a microcontroller only requires interfacing the appropriate serial port pins with the receive and transmit pins, pins 2 and 3 respectively, on the MP3 module. Important to note that the MP3 module serial port is 3.3 volt, and so if the microcontroller serial port is not similarly 3.3 volt, a voltage divider is used here, or other means of voltage conversion, will be necessary otherwise the MP3 module could be damaged. In this demo, I've used an Arduino Uno because of the simplicity and ubiquity of this microcontroller. In the following example, I use the hardware serial port for connection to a PC, so I can use a keyboard with the Arduino, which in turn will send commands to the MP3 module, using the pins 10 and 11 as defined using the software serial Arduino code library. The use of the PC keyboard with the Arduino is to keep the circuit as simple as possible, so I can just focus on demonstrating the microcontroller control of the MP3 module. This also helps with troubleshooting if there is a problem. Another item to note is that I don't use the Arduino via the USB cable for power supply to the MP3 module, but rather the MP3 module is still powered by my benchtop supply. The 5V pin on the Arduino is rated up to 500mA, but the PC USB port, unless you are using a powered hub, may be limited to 150mA, as is the case here. While there are code libraries available for the MP3 module, there is a link in the description below, however the serial command format and control of the MP3 module is fairly simple, so it's a straightforward matter of writing some DIY code, which also helps with understanding what's going on under the hood so as to speak and also enables you to incorporate only what functionality you need, saving valuable RAM and ROM space in the microcontroller, which always seems to be at a premium in DIY projects. The central component of the code is the function that assembles and sends the actual serial command to the MP3 module, which I have named here do MP3 command. The serial command format itself, as per the datasheet, is composed of 10 bytes as shown. 
The start byte must contain the hexadecimal value 7E, which alerts the MP3 module that a command is being sent. And similarly, the last byte must be hex value EF, which tells the module that the command sequence is completed. The meaning and values of the other bytes are as shown, but in particular note the fourth byte, the value of which is the actual function you wish the MP3 module to perform. The value for each desired function is detailed in the datasheet table in section 3.3. So back to the code, which starts with including a necessary Arduino library for the software serial port and defining some constants and variables. The setup function only runs once when the Arduino is powered on, and this initializes the serial ports, and then waits one and a half seconds to ensure that the MP3 player has been initialized. The datasheet states that this initialization can take between 500 and 1500 milliseconds, depending upon how many tracks are on the SD card. No MP3 command should be sent before this initialization has been finished. Then the function do MP3 command is called to send a command to the MP3 module, which is to change the volume. This is because the default power on behavior of the MP3 module is that tracks are played at maximum volume. The first parameter of the function call has a value of 6, which is as per the datasheet, is the specified volume function, with the desired volume 0 to a max of 30, set via the third parameter, in this case with a variable called the volume, which has been previously set to a value of 15, which means half max volume. Now that a loop function is called continually, which starts with toggling on and off an LED, just to show that the code in the Arduino is actually running. Then a check is made of the serial port connected to the PC to see if any bytes have been received, and if so, the switch statement checks the value of the received byte and then executes the appropriate code for the received input. For example, if the character P has been received, the current track is either played or paused, depending upon the value in the variable file playing. Note in each case, the switch statement calls the doMP3 command function to send the appropriate value to the MP3 module to perform the desired physical action. In order to keep this as brief as possible, I'm trying to avoid this becoming an Arduino coding tutorial, but if you want more explanation, please leave a message in the comments. So with that quick run through the code out of the way, this video shows the code and circuit in operation. Well that's about it. If you want to be advised when the video showing this MP3 module incorporated into a barking dog alarm using a microwave body detector is ready, please hit the subscribe button and click the bell.